I went to a debate. It was a Christian Muslim debate. And the pastor was like, you know, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is God. So I, I waited to after the lecture. I went up to him. I said, listen, can I ask you a few questions? So did you go to a debate or a lecture? Your story isn't really lining up. I said, I'm battling faith right now. And if you could solve this problem for me, it would help me in this journey. So he says, sure, my son, ask me. So I said, in the Bible, Jesus is on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? These are my two questions. Jesus, you said he's God. He said, yes. I said, you said he's the son of God. He said, yes. I said, who is he calling upon? He says, my God, my God. So what I'm seeing here, I got your God, Jesus, and I got the God of Jesus because Jesus is calling on a God. And then Oh no, I've never heard this one before. You've got me stumped. So this is the typical let's build a false premise, beg the question, and presuppose Christians are tritheists and attack a position we don't even hold. So Christ in his human nature, every time he refers to God, he is speaking to the Father as this is proper to his humanity. This also points to his relationship with God the Father within the Trinity, and this also tells me you know nothing about Christian theology. Then he said, why has thou forsaken me? You told me Jesus knew his purpose. He came to die for our sins. So why is he saying now in the critical moment, why has thou forsaken me? Right? So I said, if he's saying that, he didn't know his purpose because the purpose was to come die for us. He shouldn't be forsaken. And who forsaked him? If he's God, did he forsake himself? Did he forget his own mission? Did he forget his own cause? He oh boy. I'm going to blow your mind here, buddy. Jesus crying out to God the Father is a fulfillment of prophecy as Jesus is quoting Psalm 22 here, fulfilling the prophetic picture of the suffering Messiah in Isaiah 53, while also pointing to the ultimate victory and redemption that his death and resurrection would accomplish. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed he put his hand on my shoulder he said son you just have to have faith i looked at him i was like Shh. i said that was the worst thing to tell me I'll take a thousand for things that never happened. So let me get this straight. This pastor that you're speaking of supposedly engages in debate, yet he couldn't give you an answer to the most basic of questions pertaining to Christianity. <laughs> This guy is the definition of without lies, Islam dies. He has to go as far as fabricating a story just to present a level one dawah objection. Without lies, Islam dies. Peace. 